Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar presented by Transfer Express. The topic is how to print caps, masks, and more using your cap press. It's going to be a fun webinar today. Lots of good information. Uh, this is one of those topics that I think is very uh, pertinent right now, especially. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a good topic because there's a lot of garment decorators out there that are uh, afraid of hats and don't like dealing with hats. So definitely, uh, definitely a, a great topic. So, uh, but anyway, hi everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Andy Curtis. I am the senior manager of graphic design and customer service here at Transfer Express. And it is my pleasure to come to you a couple times a month with these webinars. If you have joined me before, then you know the deal. Uh, please feel free to pop your questions into the chat box off to the side there. Um, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, um, and uh, as like I, uh, as I said, as always, go ahead and pop your questions into the chat box as we go. I will do my best to answer them. If I miss a question, please forgive me. I talk quite a bit and I can go for 45 straight minutes. So if I miss your question, my uh, helper behind the curtain is going to pop in there and uh, try to catch the questions. Um, but I will do my best to answer them as well, too. So is is there really a curtain, Ronnie? No, there's not really a curtain. He's kind of like behind a door and a few cubicles over. So, um, but we'll pretend it's a curtain, right? <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about how to print caps, masks, and more using your cap press. So this is one of those topics, like I said, that I know a lot of decorators are afraid of hats. Um, and I get it because it's not something we do all the time. Uh, and it's funny because there are decorators whose businesses are totally based around caps, who've got uh, a thing they do very well and they, they roll with it. But a lot of us, a lot of us don't have a lot of opportunities to mess with caps, right? They don't really walk into our shop all the time. Um, and uh, we don't necessarily uh, have the opportunity. So that's that's the whole point is we're gonna talk to you about how to do it. If you do have the opportunity to press caps, if uh, some a business opportunity walks into your shop and suddenly you're contemplating pressing caps, we wanna give you some information to play with there. So, um, and I, I saw somebody ask, no, you can't see my face. Uh, it's just the webinar slides that you're gonna see today. So no, I, I promise you don't wanna see me. <laughs> All right, so if we're gonna talk about caps, uh, the first thing we need to do before we talk about anything else, before you guys ask any questions about different styles and different stuff and different things, uh, the very first thing we gotta talk about is the cap press. So before we do anything, you have to have the press to press the hats, right? Um, now. I want to point out to everybody, one of the common misconceptions is people look at it and go, gosh, that's so much money and I don't want to invest in something that can only print hats. That is totally not the point. We are going to talk about all sorts of different things today. We're going to talk a lot about caps, don't get me wrong, but there are more things that you can press with your cap press. It's not just baseball caps. So I want to get that out there first. When you look at these presses, they can do more than just caps, okay? And Carol, I'm glad you have a, a 360 IQ and clearly enjoying it. That's good to hear. Uh, so starting at the left and working our way down here, um, thank you for that intro, Joe. That's where we're going. So uh, on the far left, you've got the Hotronics 360 IQ. So that's the most uh, developed. That's the most high-tech cap press. And then going all the way down to the far side there, you've got the Max cap press. That is, I don't want to say low-tech, but that's got less bells and whistles. So um, the I-60 or the <laughs> 360 IQ, that cap press has a lot of neat features. It's got an upper and lower heated platen. It's got a touch screen that keeps track of uh, productivity and stuff. The I, uh, 360 IQ has a lot of bells and whistles that do a lot of different things. OK, um, now, is it fully necessary to have one of those? No, it's not. Um, speaking from a Transfer Express perspective, you're not going to find any products at Transfer Express that require you to have an upper and lower heated platen. Um, so is it necessary to have one? No, it's not. If you can have a 360 IQ, is it nice to have? Absolutely. Um, and Cindy here is going to be our uh, commercial for it. <laughs> um, 
it's definitely a fun press if you have the money for it. Uh, it's nice to be able to see your productivity. It's nice to have that rounded edge that it has uh, so you don't have to worry about pinching and creasing your hats. Um, and the upper and lower heated platen is nice too for certain products uh, out there in the world. There are products that require you to have that. Um, so the, I, the 360 IQ is a great press to have. Uh, however, the price tag is $1,495. The next one in the middle here is the Hotronics Auto Open. So this press has a couple less features than the 360 IQ. It doesn't have the upper and lower heated platen. It's just an upper heated platen. But what's nice about the Auto Open is just like the name says, it opens by itself. It allows you to be more productive. Um, I don't know how you guys feel, but I am one of those people where I am never doing just one thing at a time. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there, right? <laughs> I'm one of those people where I'm always doing five things at once. And the auto open is nice because I don't have to worry about burning something. I can be doing two things at a time and not worry about the, the press beeping at me until I lift it up. So that whole auto open feature to me is one of the nicest things in the world. I love it. That's just how I function. Um, at C, thank you, Larry, for backing me up here. That's the other thing that's nice about the middle press, the Hotronics Auto Open, as well as the one on the other end, the Max, is that you can have the interchangeable platens to print different size hats. And we'll talk about what all that means in, in just a second here. Um, <clears throat> uh, the problem that you have with the uh, Auto Open and the Max is that the uh, platens are, are static sizes. And this is one of the nice things about the 360 is with that curved platen and the pinching and stuff, um, it, it's, it's solving different problems, if you will, right? And then, like I said, on the far end, you've got the Max Press. The Max Press is uh, no bells or whistles. It doesn't have any of the special crazy features, but it is very cost effective at $750. So it doesn't open by itself. It doesn't have the upper and lower heated platen, uh, but it's a very practical machine. Uh, so now for those of you who are out there listening to me right now and you're thinking to yourselves, well, I'm new to hats. I don't know how often I'm going to use this press. This is just a once in a while thing for me. The Max Press is the one you want to start with. The $750 price tag is nice. And keep in mind that it might not be the 360 IQ, but that $750 price tag still gets you the best, uh, the best heat press uh, um, uh, uh, warranty package in the industry, right? Uh, the Hotronics presses are all very well protected and very good quality. Um, so you still do get uh, uh, good warranties on the Max Press. So at the end of the day, you definitely um, you definitely want to uh, you definitely want to consider how much you're going to use this hat press when you're looking at which one to purchase. How much are you going to use it? How often are you going to be pressing hats or masks or any of the things that we're going to go over today? Um, if you're going to be standing at a press for eight hours, if your business is going to do a lot of hats on a regular basis, then yes, you definitely want to consider the 360 IQ or the auto open. Uh, if you're not going to be doing hats quite so often, is if it's a once in a while thing, maybe you've got like one baseball team that hits you up every season, that kind of thing. Then maybe the auto open is the one for you. But if this is brand new territory for you and you're sort of just going, okay, you know what? This is the thing I'm going to add to my business. I don't know how much I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it then the max is for you. So Ronnie asks a good question here. So uh, I'm glad somebody put this in there and I saw somebody else say it too. Uh, why not buy an eight and one to get the hat press and even more? So I'll be totally honest with you. If you go out there and do your research, you're going to find that there are presses out there that have attachments and stuff where you can uh, detach one piece and suddenly it's a mug press and then you reconfigure it. Now it's a hat press. Um, the problem with those, Ronnie, and they're not bad. They're absolutely useful in their own right. The problem with those is that sometimes those presses are not known, most of the time, those presses are not known for their quality. So the problem with those can be they, they don't last a long time. And I hate to say this, but remember that the more moving bits and pieces you have, the more moving parts you have, the more stuff there is to go wrong. Um, and, and Katie says it real well here, too. I, I, or uh, Robert, I'm sorry, Robert says it real well, too. Uh, I have a 30-year-old original Hotronics works fine. There you go. That's the way uh, that we think about it here. Um, the Hotronics presses are a little bit more expensive. They don't have all the attachments and stuff, but these presses will last you for 30 years. They will last a long time to where the 8-in-1 presses, um, 
there's just so many moving bits and pieces and moving parts and, and things that can go wrong with those. And they're not always the most high quality presses to start with. So just some thoughts. Um, and I, I should have moved on to the second slide here, but you guys got me talking. Uh, so these are some of the bells and whistles that we've been talking about here. So the 360 IQ has that uh, bottom heat platen for patches. And again, for Transfer Express products here at Transfer, we don't necessarily need the upper and lower uh, platens together. Just the upper platen is fine. Uh, hence why the auto open and the max hat presses are, are uh good options. Um, but if you are going to do patches and these products that do require the upper and lower heated platen, then obviously the 360 IQ is, is it for you. Um, but in addition to that, it's got that rounded platen that prevents the pinching. But the thing you got to remember is that 360 IQ has a limited print height of two and a two and a quarter, 2.25. Okay. Um, so uh, definitely something to think about. You've got to consider all your options. Now, that auto open and the max, they have larger platens to start with, so bigger than that two and a quarter, but they also have all the interchangeable platens too. And we're going to talk about that in a second. I know I saw somebody ask what interchangeable platens meant. We're going to get there. Hang tight for just two seconds for me. Um, but uh, it, it all comes down to all three of these are great presses. You got to ask yourself what you're doing with them and what your plan is. So uh, Aaron's asking, will the Max handle some of the new leather patches Stalls is offering? So that, there's the hitch, Aaron, is some of those new products that Stalls are off, the Stalls is offering, they do require the upper and lower heated platens. So that's where, uh, that's where I'm talking about, Aaron, where you got to sort of kick around what your goal is going to be, what products are you going to use, what are you going to be doing with your hat press when you're starting to make that decision? All right. So aside from the press itself, let's start talking about some pressing tips and let's start talking about some things to think about. OK, so this is one of those funny things where we have a lot of customers that call us at Transfer Express. They're doing their first hat order. They're pressing hats. And the first thing that goes through their mind is, well, gosh, which transfer type do I use? We're so used to uh, we're so used to thinking of cotton T-shirts and polyester performance wear that when somebody puts a hat in front of us, we go, "Oh gosh, wait a minute! I don't. I'm not sure which transfer type to use. <laughs> I'm not sure which one to go with here." Um, so uh, here's the here's the hitch. This is a super easy question to answer, and I'm going to give you three bullet points, and this will cover everything. Okay. So if you're doing a one or two color design and it's on a cotton or a cotton poly hat, you want goof proof. If you're doing a one or two color design on a polyester hat, you want elasti prints. And then if you're doing three or more colors or full color, like my uh, black hat in the picture here, then you want ultra color, ugh, ultra color soft. Okay. So there it is. There's the three bullet points you need for when you're figuring out which transfer type do I put on a hat? Which one do I use? One or two color cotton poly hats, goof proof. One or two color polyester elasti prints. And then three or more or full color, ultra color soft. All right. So those are the things to keep in mind. So it, it really is that easy. At the end of the day, when you're picking your screen printed transfer type or, or your transfer type from Transfer Express, hats are real easy to go with. And and that whole uh, ultra color soft option there, that ultra color soft option will work on the cotton or the polyester. So that's why we don't have to break that down any further. It's when you're doing a spot color, one or two colors that you have to differentiate between the two because that goof proof transfer, you don't want to put the goof proof transfer on a polyester cap because then it runs the risk of scorching. We've all done that before, scorch polyester, and that's never fun, right? <laughs> we don't we don't want to do that. Um, I saw a good question here. Uh, Ron asked, do you turn off the bottom heat on the 360 IQ with transfers? Um, and I see my helper answered, but I do want to sort of extrapolate just a tiny little bit. Um, so you, you can turn the heat down, Ron, but essentially at the end of the day, I want you to keep in mind that that bottom heat doesn't actually hurt a transfer. So if you do, if you're pressing like a, a goof proof or an elasti print or whatever, that bottom heat's not going to hurt anything. So you don't need to worry about like, oh gosh, well, like I can't, so I can't use goof proof when I'm, you know, doing the 360 IQ. It's totally not the case. Um, 
All it means is when you're pressing a goof proof hat on the 360 IQ, you don't need to worry about what the bottom platen temperature is because the top platen will provide all the heat that the goof proof transfer needs. So it's one of those where you just, you don't have to go that direction. So you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Uh, Joe, yes, you can use the ultra color soft on any cap, basically. So there's, there's more things to keep in mind as we go. So keep in mind, I've got a bunch more slides here uh, to that point, Joe. So there's sort of more things to think about with hats. But if we're talking about just sheerly transfer types and fabrics, yes, the ultra color soft will really go on just about any kind of baseball style cap that's out there in the world. So you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. All right. Uh, Cheryl's asking, are you going to be going over best caps to press on? So honestly, Cheryl, the funny thing about this is that 10, 15 years ago, uh, and actually I think we did do a whole webinar based on that, the best caps to use and that sort of thing, but it was many years ago, uh, we could have done that. Today's day and age, there are a bazillion different cap companies out there and there's a bazillion different places to get hats from. So at this point, Cheryl, we, I don't have a list of the best caps to press on, no. Um, but we are going to talk about the different features and the different things on hats as we go here throughout the rest of these slides. So stay tuned for some of those answers. Okay, so let's keep going here. Tip number two. So uh, there's two things we're going to talk about in this slide. There's some uh, vocabulary. So, all right, class. All right, class. Everybody get your notebooks out and take notes. <laughs> um, so here's, here's where we're going to talk about. Listen to teacher here. So there are a couple different vocabulary words I want you guys to take away here. So when you're new to the hat industry, one of the words you're going to see is profile. OK, so I, we've got some pictures here that I hope illustrate what the word profile means. It's a great visual. When you hear the word profile being discussed when it comes to hats, we're talking about the printable area. Sort of think of it as the actual forehead part of the hat. OK, so a high profile means that that whole front piece, that that whole the actual hat part that goes on your head. High profile means that that's taller. It's bigger. Then you've got mid profile and then you've got low profile hat. So low profile means that that whole hat part of it is actually shorter. So when you're going to decorate a hat, these are things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, you know what, Chris? Visors are more of a universal thing, uh, although see that's even changed in the last you know, the last five, six, seven years too. It's sort of the same thing, Chris. When you're buying visors, you need to pay attention to that profile size. Um, and that's kind of the point that we're making here is that when you're going to decorate hats, you got to pay attention to the size of your profile. Now, if you're looking at hats that don't actually say anything about profile, then you, you're working with something that's standard and it's not a big deal. If you're decorating a high profile hat, then it's not really the biggest deal in the world in terms of your decoration. It just means you have more space to work with. But if you're going to decorate a low profile hat, then you got to remember that you have less space to work with. So you can't go crazy with whatever you're doing, whatever design you're putting together. Right. So this is one of those things you just want to be smart about what you're working with. Right. Um, so uh, the other thing that we're talking about here, the main point of this slide that I, I want to get across to everybody is using the right platen. OK, so now, as we talked at the very beginning, the IQ uh, 360 IQ hat press doesn't have the interchangeable platens. The auto open and the max do have the interchangeable platens. And the whole reason for these interchangeable platens is that the hat industry has a million different sizes. OK, a million different sizes. And actually, Melissa, you're sort of leading me right into this here. Um, uh, Melissa saying, how well does the 360 work if you can't change out the platen? The 360 works fine, Melissa, if you're if you've planned ahead and you're working within the size that the lower platen of the 360 IQ is. So if you have a hat that you're trying to decorate that's taller than that 360 IQ platen, then yeah, you'd be in trouble and you wouldn't want to do that. But this is what we were talking about at the beginning where you're considering what projects you're going to be taking. What are you going to be doing with your hat press? If you think you're going to be pressing hat transfers that are larger than that, then yeah, you want to get something that accommodates these interchangeable platens. 
Because at the end of the day, that's the whole point of these platens is that there are a million different sizes of hats out there. There's the high profile and the low profile and the low crown and the Castro style hats. There's a million different style hats out there. And uh, the interchangeable platens are great because the different size platens will accommodate the different size hats. Now, I am one of those people where when I'm pressing t-shirts, I don't necessarily use different size platens. I'm one of those guys where I like to use a print perfect pad and I don't like to change out a platen unless I have to. And this, that's just my personal preference. That's how I function. But even me, a guy that doesn't like to change his platens when he's doing shirts, when I'm doing hats, I definitely, definitely make sure I change out that hat platen size for the one that goes with the hats that I bought. Okay. So if I purchase a hat, that is a low profile, let's say. If I purchase a low profile hat, I have to use that low profile platen. If you've ever tried to put a hat onto a hat platen that's not the right size, then you've seen the problem. You can crease the hat, you can uh, under apply the transfer. Uh, one of the worst things in the world is when your uh, hat is tall, but your hat platen you're using is too short and you go and press the transfer and you realize, oh my gosh, I, a whole inch of my transfer was hanging over the edge. There was no platen there. So it peels right off. It doesn't even stick. Or that horrible feeling when you load on a cap that's too short onto a really big platen and you're trying to squeeze that sucker on there and get it to fit and why won't it fit? And then you go and press it and you crease the hat or you uh, stick, you, you now have a new dent in the forehead of this cap because it wasn't the right size. At the end of the day, this is one of those things where you've got to have the right size platen for the right size hat. That's the, the, the easiest way to make the process work. Now, at the end of the day, I do want to put out there that if you are a very resourceful individual and you are dead set on making it happen, there are ways to get around these things. There are ways to still press a hat on the wrong size platen, but boy, howdy, it just takes time figuring out like, okay, where's the crease at and where does the transfer fall and how do I have to get it on? The, it, basically, my point is that you can make it work, but it's going to take a lot of time out of your day. And we all know as garment decorators, we all know that time is money and I can't spend hours fiddling with hats when I'm not going to make a ton of money on these hats necessarily anyway. So I need this to be a quick process, right? So I see some of you backing me up here. Thank you, Kenneth. I appreciate that. We've all, we've all tried that at some point, right? Um, so uh, Lynette, that is one of those things uh I have the 360 IQ. I'm needing help on what heat settings to use for different transfers. So if you're talking about our products, Lynette, uh, that you don't have to worry about the settings for that lower platen, actually. Uh, and the instructions do, oh, like, there you go. The instructions do come with the uh, transfers. So, okay. Tip number three, this is a big one. So this is another one where I need everybody to pay attention. If you're new to hats, if you're new to hats, this is something important you're going to want to listen to, okay? Stay with me here. So when you're new to hats, there are two varieties of hat. There's five panel hats and six panel hats. Every cap, every baseball style cap fits into one of these two categories. And here's what this means. If you look at my hat on the left-hand side, that's kind of that uh, uh, light bluey, tealy color there, that blue hat has a seam going right down the middle of the forehead. Does everybody see that? The blue hat there has a seam that's going right down the middle of the forehead. That is a six-panel hat. It gets that name because those panels, and essentially, if you were to like, if you were to take a hat apart, the top part of that hat, they're all these triangle panels, right? And you sew those triangle panels together to get that hat shape. So a six panel hat has six of those triangles all sewn together to make that hat shape. And that six panel hat means that one of those seams between the two panels goes straight down the middle of the forehead to where the cap on the right hand side, my red cap here, this cap is a five panel cap. And it's called a five panel 
because it doesn't have that two smaller panels in the front. It's got one big panel in the front. So it's five total panels that have created that shape. And most importantly, that means that there is no seam down the middle of that hat. This is important, guys, because when you're decorating, if you're decorating over that seam on a six panel hat, it is possible, but it's a pain in the butt, okay? If you are not careful when you're pressing over that six panel hat, then where that, uh, that seam occurs, you're gonna have transfers cracking apart because that seam, there's nothing for the transfer to adhere to, all right? If you were to look super closely, if you were to get a magnifying glass out and look at that six panel hat, there is going to be that little, that little canyon between the two panels where that seam is, where the transfer doesn't stick to anything because there's nothing to stick to, there's nothing there. So you run the risk of that transfer splitting straight down the middle. So our recommendation here at Transfer Express is that yes, you can decorate on a six panel hat, but boy howdy, it is so much easier to decorate on a five panel hat. So if you can do a five panel hat instead of a six panel, do it, okay? Uh, and Joe, Joe, that's a fantastic question. Uh, for the number of panels, it's basically a matter of preference for the customer. It, it, and a uh, second good follow-up, Joe, are both types of panels charged the same to the customer? So honestly, Joe, it, it is preference. If you go through and look at hat offerings from different manufacturers, there are some manufacturers that have an equal amount of both opportunities, five panel and six panel. You'll find some manufacturers that favor six panel hats. Um, and some, some people, it's a shape thing. Like if, um, I, I didn't use the best photograph here for it, but if you were to look at sort of a profile view of these two hats, you would notice that the five panel is shaped just a tiny bit differently than the six panel hat. And there are some people that look at that six panel hat and prefer that whole size thing that's going on, uh, the way that the shape is. Um, and there are some people that don't mind. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's a preference, yes. And most of the time, the different uh, the different styles are priced the same usually. Um, I can't say that carte blanche though, Joe, because every every manufacturer is a little bit different. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you definitely want to consider a six panel hat if you can, or a, I'm sorry, a five panel hat if you can. If you can avoid the six panel then we suggest you do so. Uh, that five panel hat is so much easier to apply on, it's so much easier to have that nice flat surface. But here's what I will throw out there. If you're going to apply a six panel hat, I encourage you to get creative. One of the coolest things that I've seen is people who have figured out ways to do really clever designs that press on either side of the seam. Uh, it, because remember, at the end of the day, it's just pressing over that seam that's a pain in the butt. If you can press something, if you can have a design that's like two separate pieces, and you can press one piece on one side of the seam and one piece on the other side of the seam, first of all, that's a really slick and cool design because you don't see a lot of that. But number two, you avoid the uh, whole quality issue of the transfer cracking. So if you're going to do a six panel hat, that's what I suggest. Otherwise, do the five panel thing, you will be much happier, I promise. All right, there we go. Okay, so tip number four, structured versus unstructured. So this is another one of those things that sort of comes at us as a surprise. If you're new to hats, if you're a t-shirt person, you don't do a lot of hats, this is gonna be one of those things where you go, wait, what? <laughs> Unless you're an embroiderer. If you're an embroiderer, then you've got a leg up on this one and you already understand. But, so let's break this down. So in my picture here, I've got two hats, right? So I've got my hat on my left, uh, which is a structured hat and I've got my hat on my right, which is an unstructured hat, okay? So a structured hat basically means that that whole front crown where you would be pressing your transfer, that whole front crown area, that's gonna be stiff. It's been reinforced with a, uh, it's, it's not really a fabric, but it, it's, a, it's a, a material called buckram. So that hat is stiff, so an embroiderer has an easier time stitching onto the front of that hat, okay? 
So structured hats are out there for embroiderers mainly. Uh, you see a lot of that in baseball, honestly. Uh, a structured hat is always going to remain the uh, uh, the shape that it is. It's never going to fold, at least not very well. You'll ruin it that way. A structured hat is meant to be that shape and that size, and it's going to stay that way. It makes life easier for embroiderers to stitch on the front of that thing. An unstructured hat means that it's not reinforced in that front area. That that unstructured hat is the kind of hat you can fold, stick it in your pocket, you can scrunch it up. Um, basically, the unstructured hat is just fabric. There's no extra structure within there. There's no extra backing within there to keep its size and its shape. Okay. When it comes to decorating, when it comes to decorating, at the end of the day, there's not really a lot of a difference between these two different kinds of hats. Um, what I find personally is that some of those structured hats tend to have a little bit of a texture to them that if you're going to press a screen printed transfer on a structured hat that's got that twill texture, uh, that's got that texture on the front of the hat, you got to keep in mind that sometimes the uh, screen printing products will like to flow into the nooks and crannies. Uh, and basically what can happen is uh, letters uh, or shapes that are meant to be very straight and have very clean lines can turn out looking not so straight and clean. Sometimes the lines can look a little bit wavy. That's the effect of the ink flowing into all the nooks and crannies of those textures. I find that the unstructured hats, and this isn't a rule, but just a sort of a tip to look out for. The unstructured hats don't often have those types of textures. Unstructured hats tend to be a little more flat and you don't have to worry about uh, some of that uh, like twill, uh, the nooks and cranny type situation. And so just something to think about, um, just something to keep in mind. All right, so tip number five, tip number five, keep it tight. So the whole point here is that when you're pressing a hat, you want the area that you're pressing, that whole front crown area of the hat, you want that to be tight against the platen, okay? You want that to be tight against the lower platen. Uh, the whole point is wherever you're pressing, wherever that transfer is going, you need the lower platen to be securely there to support the transfer, to provide the pressure that the transfer needs to properly apply. OK, if the transfer is not positioned properly above that lower platen and the pressure is off, the transfer might not apply correctly. So in the end, this is honestly just as easy as making sure the area that you're applying. So the crown of that transfer is tight against the lower platen. OK, so now one of the ways to make sure that you're doing this is to lock the clip. A good hat press, all the Hotronics hat presses have a clip in the back where after you've loaded the hat on, you flip the clip down and the clip pulls the hat tight against the lower platen. Do not skip that step of the process. Okay, very important. Now, it's also worth noting that uh, sometimes with structured hats, uh, because they are stiff, Sometimes with structured hats, you got to mess around a little bit by hand, okay? Because of the way the platen falls on the press, you might have to futz with it a little bit. You might have to lock it down, make sure it's where it needs to be, unlock it, adjust it, whatever. That's the, the structured hat, again, is the one that's stiff and doesn't change its shape. The unstructured hats, whatever, those are easy because those will form themselves to the lower platen and it's not a problem. Uh, but with the structured hats, it can be a little bit deceiving. You want to make sure that your transfer is positioned properly on that lower platen. You don't want your transfer to hang away from the lower platen because that's going to, again, that's going to mean that it's not going to apply correctly. You're going to have an underapplied transfer that's going to flake off or that's not even going to come off the paper. All right. And Ron's got a good point here. Uh, the platens aren't always the same shape. Uh, sometimes I have issues with the sides coming in contact. 
Uh, so that's that's the funny thing about hats, Ron, is that there are hats out there too that aren't necessarily uh, like one company's low profile cap might not be exactly the same as a different company's low profile cap. There are a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts when it comes to applying on hats. So this is this is why you see why people are intimidated by them, and, and it is a little bit intimidating. But again, the whole point is that if you do your homework and you think about some of the things we're talking about here, it doesn't need to be quite so scary. All right, there we go. All right, so aside from caps, so we, I said this at the very beginning of the webinar, aside from caps, one of the easiest ways to make use of your cap press, one of the best uses is masks, right? So I know that none of us are really thrilled with the reason why masks are super popular and why we need them. But the point is masks are out there. They are a viable part of your business, folks. If you guys aren't decorating masks, I have to ask you why. <laughs> if you're not decorating masks already, why? It is so easy to decorate. And if you have a cap press, it is frighteningly easy, uh, uh, frighteningly easy to decorate a mask. Um, Face masks fit perfectly, perfectly on a standard uh, cap platen on the auto open and the max press. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Brian. We use our press for masks every day. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not decorating masks, then you're missing something. Trust me, guys. Um, but uh, there we go. Thank you, Elizabeth. I almost sold my old Hotronics until I started decorating masks. Uh, masks are, are a big cash cow right now, guys. And let's be honest, uh, how often do you misplace your masks? <laughs> I, there's going to be a point in my life where I clean my house and I'm sure I'm going to find masks in every room, hiding under everything. Uh, I, I, it's going to be scary, right? Um, the point is everybody needs masks. Everybody's using masks and masks are so easy to decorate. So easy to decorate. Um, uh, good question. Is there a specific type of transfer for masks? Uh, honestly, Joe, the answer to that question is what's the fabric made out of? Uh, most, most masks that are decoratable right now, easy to decorate, most of them are cotton or some kind of cotton polyester. I, there are some, uh, polyester masks. I, I've actually seen more of those here lately, to be honest with you. Um, so when it comes down to it, Joe, really, it, it's what fabric your mask is made out of. Um, but either way, the point that I'm making on this slide is that regardless of what kind of mask, uh, whether it's a cotton poly or whether it's a polyester, uh, you're going to have a much easier time pressing that using the cap press. And you can see from my photograph here, the photograph I have on the top left, it's, it's frightening <laughs> how easy this is uh, because you see how the mask fits perfectly. And that's the standard size cap platen there. It fits perfectly the little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom drape over the sides. And this is nice because we all know that a high quality mask has a little bit of a form fit to the face, right? So this is what makes using the hat press so easy is because those masks that are formed to the face, you can hang them over the sides like that a little bit, giving a nice flat surface to apply the transfer to. Um, so super easy peasy stuff here. So just throwing it out there that if you're considering buying a hat press and you're sitting there thinking, well, gosh, how often am I going to press hats? You can do so much more than hats, right? So aside from masks, oh, I'm sorry, that's right. A couple other little tidbits here. Um, something that we have been throwing out to everybody uh, before we continue on here on the whole mask topic. Something that we've been throwing out to everybody is... Uh, Printing masks is not only quick and, and pretty painless for us as decorators, but remember when you're putting an order together, when you're putting together a screen print order, like you see on the bottom of my page here, my baseball mom design, uh, there's space left over usually, right? Like even people who are diligent about filling up your gang sheet, there's usually some extra space. Masks are so small to begin with that making a mask transfer is easy peasy. You've already got space on your gang sheet, I bet. Uh, I, I'm sure you're doing your best to use up all your space, but even the people who do fill up their gang sheets, there's always extra room. So fill up that extra space with a mask or a cap size transfer. And uh, we, 
we recommend that you go about two inches tall. Uh, two inches tall is a great starting place. Now, keep in mind that uh, keep in mind that there is no standard mask size at this particular point. And and I say that because I've I've seen masks that are a little taller, masks are a little shorter. Either way, a great starting place is that two inch tall mark. And I, I suggest you break out a ruler, you do some measuring, check it out. But uh, two inches is a good place to start, right? But again, keep in mind that uh, you've got extra space on your gang sheet, I, I'm sure. So it's easy to find space to put a two inch tall uh, cap or mask transfer on there. All right, so aside from uh, caps, you can use your cap press to also press beanies. So what's funny about this is this is one of those, those uh, uh, trends that comes and goes. And you see people are super, super, uh, attach their beanies for a little while and then it'll sort of phase out for a couple years and it phases back in for a couple years and phases back out for a couple years. Um, so uh, it's kind of funny how that goes. Uh, so here's my question to everybody. Uh, have you gotten requests for beanies? How many people out there have actually gotten requests for beanies like uh, to decorate them here lately? Uh, anybody actually gotten uh, requests to decorate beanies here lately? in the last uh, couple couple months, last couple weeks, anything like that, anybody? Doesn't sound like a lot of people. Um, so uh, beanies are one of those things. Oh, there we go, a couple people coming in here. Um, oh, wow, okay, yeah, a lot of you guys, see? Uh, beanies are one of those things. Oh, patches on beanies, there you go, okay. Oh, wow, wow, lots of you guys. <laughs> Melissa, yes, and turn them away. <laughs> Elizabeth is embroidering on them, okay, all right. Oh, Patricia's doing beanies right now. Oh, all right. See a lot of you guys. So, uh, oh, Ron. Okay. You know what, Ron? I'm just going to let you do the webinar, Ron. <laughs> so here's the point that I'm making. Oh, wow. Look at you guys. All right. So lots of beanie stuff going on right now. So here's the point. Uh, somebody did mention, I saw somebody say that beanies flatten out. You're totally right. You don't have to press a beanie on a cap press. I'm not saying that that's a requirement. You can press a beanie on a regular t-shirt press because beanies do flatten out. But if you're going to do a lot of beanies and speed is a factor, doing beanies on a hat press is super duper simple. Okay. The one thing I want to throw out there to everybody, and Ron sort of beat me to the punch here. Uh, one thing I want to throw out to everybody is if you're pressing beanies, you want to use polyester or poly cotton beanies whenever possible. And I say this because we've probably all seen acrylic beanies. And again, those, there's nothing wrong with them. Acrylic is one of those things where you can decorate acrylic, but acrylic can be messy because it has a different melt temperature. Uh, and, and the frustrating thing is, depending on the way the manufacturer has made the acrylic beanie, that melt temperature can actually change. <laughs> so there are times when you can hit a beanie at one temperature and it'll scorch and you uh, get a different brand ac acrylic beanie and hit it at that same temperature and it doesn't scorch. Um, so that's one of those things you want to be careful of. And David, there you go. There's a very good point. You want to keep the pressure light, um, especially when you're dealing with the acrylic stuff, right? You don't want to mush the acrylic stuff down. Um, and in general with beanies, you want to keep the pressure light too, because remember that you're working with something that's knit in some capacity. So if you mush the pressure, if you really smash a beanie, even a, even a cotton or polyester beanie, um, what's going to happen is you're going to sort of mess with the texture of it. You're going to smush some of that weave down and it's going to look weird. Um, so you definitely want to be careful about that. So very good point, David, very good point about keeping the pressure light. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> you know what, off the top of my head, Adrian, I am not 100% certain what brand this was. I don't know if my helper behind the curtain knows that off the top of his head. I'll see if he does, he can pop that in there. Um, but honestly, when it comes down to it, Adrian, the more important part isn't really so much the brand. It's making sure that when you do decorate a beanie, you want to use polyester or cotton polyester. Okay, and the good news here is that goof proof, uh, if you're doing a spot color transfer, the goof proof works great. If you're doing a polyester beanie, the elasti print works great. And if you're doing full color artwork, the ultra color soft works on all of it, right? So uh, again, decorating on beanies, super simple. Uh, and you can do it with a shirt press, but what I'm pointing out to everybody here is that 
it is so much easier to press a beanie using a cap press, right? Because it's the right shape, it's the right size, it's easy to get on and off real quick, and you don't have some of the same challenges you do with caps. Uh, pressing beanies does tend to be a much faster ordeal too. This is another one of those things that uh, I don't know that everybody knows this. Uh, this was one of my favorite things to do with a hat press, honestly. Um, <laughs> the most projects that I've used the hat press for in the 19 years that I have been with Transfer Express, most of those projects have been for sleeves. <laughs> I've done uh, short sleeves and long sleeves. If you're pressing on the wrist of a, sh of a long sleeve shirt, um, if you're pressing on the bicep of a short sleeve shirt, like you see in the picture here, pressing on a sleeve is infinitely easier, infinitely easier using a cap press, I promise. If you've ever tried to press a short sleeve, I'm almost afraid to ask this actually. Have any of you guys tried to press a short sleeve transfer using a shirt press? Anybody? That's that's not fun. <laughs> or pants too, Patricia, yes, or shorts really, honestly. Um, but if you've ever tried to press a short sleeve on a t-shirt press, that is a giant pain in the tuchus. It is not fun, it is not easy. <laughs> um, the hat press is definitely much easier. <laughs> good, good input, Kayla, yes, really don't love it. I, I'm totally with you on that one. Um, pressing sleeves on a hat press is a much easier, much easier project. And and it's it's fun too, because having that hat press allows you to do some really neat things on sleeves. It's one of those things where it, if you have the right customer, if you have the right audience, depending on what type of people you cater to in your business, uh, pressing on sleeves can really be a lot of fun. There's a lot of neat stuff that you can do. Um, or Honestly, even if you're not doing unique and artistic things on sleeves, you as a business owner, one of the one of the strategies that you see some people do is they'll they'll take their business's logo or their business's name real small and they're they'll use a hat press to press their logo on the short sleeve of short sleeve t-shirts that they make. It's a sort of an advertisement tool, right? Um so <laughs> Alan's right. I, you know what, Alan? You're 100% correct. Alan says it's not a problem with the fusion if you have the smaller plans. You're totally right, Alan. You're totally right. You can absolutely, you can absolutely do a short sleeve uh, on the fusion when you have the right size platen. Um, but if you have a hat press, it's just an extra, an extra reason that the hat press is nice to have. Ooh, and I, you know what? I didn't include that, uh, Rodell if that's your name, Rodell, uh, Gators. Uh, those are super popular right now. And it's funny because at the beginning of COVID, I'm not sure you saw Gators a heck of a lot. It was a little bit harder to find them, but we're definitely to that point now where you see Gators for sale everywhere. So you see a lot more people decorating on Gators. So it's uh, super easy to decorate a Gator on a hat press. I, I didn't have that in here, but that is a very good point. Okay. Shirt tags. I saw one of you guys say this already. Uh, shirt tags are so easy doing these on the cat press also. Um, and the beautiful thing about this is that it goes quicker. I honestly believe that if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do shirt tags, I think it's quicker to do them on the hat press than actually to do them on the shirt press. It, it takes a hot minute to get used to sort of the difference um, in terms of like muscle memory and working with the hat press. But if you're going to do a whole bunch of shirt tags, I felt like I did them quicker on the hat press. I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but I definitely feel like I got faster doing these on the cat press. Um, and, and you don't have to mess with it too much. You don't have to like on a on a shirt press. You have to worry about raising the surface area enough to make sure that that uh, tag actually applies correctly. To wear on the hat press, you don't have to worry about that. You sort of just lay. Uh, you don't turn the shirt inside out or anything. You just lay it down flat, and it it's perfect. It's perfect the way that the area where the tag goes. Uh, you could sort of move it around uh, and and uh, uh, move the two sides of the collar down. Um, and it's easy to just sort of bing, bam, boom, you know. Um, so definitely a great way to use your hat press shirt tags. Uh, again, I feel that this is easier and faster if you want my opinion. Um, but with all this being said, uh, I do want to throw it out there to everybody. And this is totally off topic. 
Um, and nobody tell our marketing manager that I'm sharing this with you right now, because I, I probably shouldn't since it's a little bit off topic, but I'm going to tell you anyway, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, go to transferexpress.com. If you're, if you're a person who does shirt tags and you do it, you're doing a lot of shirt tags, go to transferexpress.com, go to our, uh, heat press accessory section, and you'll see that there is a new, a new, uh, platen for your shirt press that's coming out called the Tagalong platen. Um, so totally off topic for this webinar, but I'm throwing it out there anyway. Don't tell the marketing people that I'm telling you because I'm sure I'll get yelled at, but check it out if you haven't because that's that's really slick stuff too. But anyway, back on topic. Uh, great use for your hat press, pressing shirt tags. I think it's it's quick and simple. A lot of, a, a lot of fun to do it this way. I enjoyed this better than sort of mus muscling around with the shirt press personally. <laughs> Andy, we're listing. Yeah, okay, well. All right. So here's one that I was shocked by this. The first time I saw one of these orders come through, I had to do a double take. So uh, please, somebody back me up here. Tell me that I'm not the only one that's getting these requests. Fanny packs. Fanny packs. They're back. It's, it's, they're, they've been resurrected from the 80s. <laughs> um, they're calling them waste packs. I talked to a, a young man on the phone this week who referred to it as a hip pack. I, I had to ask him twice what he was talking about. I'd never heard it called a hip pack before, but I, I got there like, oh, wow, hip pack. Okay. Pam just did a hundred of these. Wow. See, I, I knew I wasn't the only one. I was so surprised. I couldn't believe I, I hadn't seen a, a fanny pack in years. <laughs> Not here. I cringe when I see them. Yeah. Okay. I, it, it's kind of funny. I, I was shocked by this. Um, so they're coming back into Vogue. Uh, it's one of those things where people are crazy, right? I agree, PM. Uh, people are requesting decoration for fanny packs now. Um, and I implore you to find an easier way. The cap press is the easiest way to apply on a fanny pack. <laughs> Not here in Washington state. <laughs> uh, it's coming your way, Jade. It's going to make its way that direction. But I encourage you, uh, if you're going to press fanny packs, do it on a hat press. Because if you think about it, a fanny pack is very much structured to be a certain shape. And I'm sure, I'm sure that if you're a very MacGyver type person, you could do this on a, a shirt press, but boy, I wouldn't want to do that. I think it's going to be a pain in the butt and I'd be worried about where the zipper is going to go and if I'm going to melt that zipper or not. Honestly, the easiest way to decorate a fanny pack is going to be with a hat press because it's got that curved shape, first of all, that goes right along with the fronts of fanny packs at least. Um, and it's got that small rectangular working space to work with, I, I think you'll find the experience a lot easier when you're working with the hat press. Thank you, Pam, backing me up there. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, so the last thing I want to throw out there to everybody is to remember that uh, when you are creating your artwork for your hats or your fanny packs or your beanies or your masks or whatever it is you're doing, I want to encourage everyone to remember that our Easy View online design tool is there to help you make your gang sheet. OK, uh, remember that we do have our own artwork. If you're looking for artwork, we provide you with the artwork, but you don't have to use our stuff. You can use your own custom artwork to put your gang sheet together. Um, if nothing else, the online designer, our design center uh, at TransferExpress.com, the design center is nice because it helps you plan your gang sheet. When you're putting together a gang sheet, in my example here, I've got an auto body shop uh, where we're doing the front of a shirt. But then we've got a whole bunch of smaller images that can be left chests, they can be hats, they can be masks, they can be beanies. The whole point here, <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble, Cindy. The whole point here is the uh, online designer is a great tool for putting your gang sheet together when you're doing hats, masks, beanies, all that kind of stuff. And remember, like I said earlier, when you're doing caps and masks and beanies and uh, fanny packs and all that, these are smaller areas to decorate. And it's so easy to find space on other orders. So in my example here, I've, I've got my Kennedy auto body and repair. I put everything, it's all themed towards that Kennedy auto body and repair. But let's say for example, that these auto body and repair people were just doing the full front of a shirt right? I could have used the whole bottom space there to put some other 
people's cap designs on there. So this is kind of the point we're getting at is that our online design tool is a great tool for you if you're putting together a gang sheet. Even if you're an old veteran and you don't need the artwork, you've got your own artwork, the online designer is nice because it helps you plan your, your gang sheet. So just throwing it out there to everybody. Oh boy, 55 minutes, not too bad. Uh, we covered so much information, guys, and you're such a fun crowd. Uh, thank you so much for all the interaction today. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, so thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, we encourage you to stay in touch with us. Uh, shoot us an email at info at transferexpress.com. Uh, come hit us up at our blog blog.transferexpress.com. Our marketing folks, I, I tease and I joke, our marketing folks are phenomenal. We have won awards, industry awards for our blog. So if you haven't been to our blog, please do check it out. It is worth it, I promise. Um, the uh, tape of this webinar and all the other webinars uh, are going to be at uh, transferexpress.com backslash webinars. So definitely hit that up. And if you're new, uh, to those of you out there in listening land who are new to this, and maybe you, this is your first webinar and you're sort of breaking into this industry, do go hit up our webinar link there, transferexpress.com slash webinars. We've got webinars for every topic under the sun, every topic under the sun. And I say this because I've, I've done most of them. <laughs> so definitely check us out. There's an infinite amount of learning you can do there. And of course, on social media, our Facebook page and stuff. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Uh, and uh, hit me up again in a couple of weeks. Join me for our next topic, and I will see you then. Have a fantastic rest of your day.